I'll probably pause here and 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 go back to Kapil um, and Sachin and Bhuvan and move on to the next question, which is we're all talking about technology and technology comes at a price, right? It's it's not going to be easy and and moving towards more practicality. What are your opinions on technology and do you think technology makes sense in terms of the return on investment? Any thoughts on that? See, uh, right now, uh, if those technologies come in a commercial app commercial applications, then I'm pretty much sure they will, they will benefit all the developers. Like, let's talk about bicep bifacial modules. So uh, now the problem with the bifacial modules are that they are still at a R&D phase and there are only limited companies have a certain lines which are operating and producing the bifacial modules. <laughs> now other challenge with this, since this being a new technology, uh, the field records are very limited. So what, 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 what industry has to do that, industry has to start putting more pilots over there, start realizing what kind of actual performance is coming. So, these kind of technologies could change whole, uh, whole, whole business sense of the solar itself. I mean, uh, because these these could these have, these com these uh, panels have a potential to produce more than twenty percent higher generation compared to the polycast line modules. And then obviously in the inverter size inverter side those uh, continuously increase in, uh, in, in inverter size is happening and container solutions obviously could could give a better advantage in the in in, in the in 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 the solar projects sure that's a great example such an anything uh, uh, technology would be acceptable in the market and in fact what we are seeing is let's say we talk about uh, uh, i'm uh, i'm uh, telling the name of the company solar that comes with the optimizer and uh, that proved that uh, yes their inverter although it comes with a cost but it is acceptable in the market but you should be able to educate your end customer what are the benefits that will come through with the technology. So, so I think technology, the future is going to be technology driven. Uh, but the thing is we should be able to sell the technology. Interesting perspective. What are your thoughts? Uh, I would like to add something more on a uh, couple's comment. I mean, uh, let's talk about uh, bifacial more because this is one technology which is coming up and adding up to 20%, which is something significantly high we are talking. Uh, we are very much there in bifacial. We are doing it full-fledged now and uh, we are uh, trying to use it on our first uh, 50 megawatt, which we are coming to set an example with. But true, that, that's very true that currently uh, if you see there is no set example or a project which is running from such a time where we can rely on we can understand how it works and as far as cost is concerned uh, for bifacial it is not as high as what we have uh, um, seen earlier now the delta is coming low like perk also we have discussed earlier the earlier we when the perk was launched the delta was somewhere around seven cent ten cent we were talking it was out of the reach of a normal not even normal even with a big big organization it is not working out but today we are seeing the delta coming down to two cents even one cents and and um, to be very precise with mono there is no delta left it's hardly 0.5 cent to 0.25 cents which we are fighting in the market so <coughs> price is very much a play thing but uh, when you talk about the new technology which is coming and especially like bifacial perk definitely it will help in reducing the cost and work out on your ROIs and IRRs. So I'll, I'll park my opinion on uh, technology and whether it gives you ROI because Bhuvan mentioned cost, price, cost, price two, three times. So it triggered a question, where do you think modules will hit, you know, in terms of mono, in terms of mono perk or polycrust line for the leading technologies where do you think in the next one year can the people sitting in the room buy modules for a very good question that is i mean uh, from everywhere it is coming what will be the price for next one year for next six months see uh, to be very precise uh, the cost of the module or the price of the module is not at all uh, um, i mean due to the technology or with the new and yes it is there i mean uh, anything new in, uh, will come up with a price but there are other factors which is hitting this price as of now it is a simpler demand supply game which is going on which i can see from my side 
If you see China demand, what they have done last year, they have done 50 gigawatts in one year and this year their target is around 65 gigawatts. From last one and a half year, we are listening about a program which is a first runner program, which is uh, with a very fantastic uh, fit in tariff, very, very fantastic uh, rates which they are doing and they have pushed it up to this August. Oh, sorry, this uh, April. So, in, in this April, this is going to end, but they came up with new program, which is solar rooftop program, and they have targeted six gigawatt to be completed in six months on the rooftops. So, that is the kind of demand which is there in China itself. <coughs> and I have seen the rates which is going in China, it's somewhere around 38 cents they are buying. If you talk about US, which was one of the most talked market last three, four months back, and we have discussed about anti-dumping over there, the, okay, big anti-dumping came in. But uh, let me be very uh, frank on that. There is no, um, I mean, no drop in the sales we have seen in US. They are buying at the same pace. Their tariffs are so good that they are really able to buy it at that rate still, with that kind of dumpings also coming in. The Australian market is heating up a bit. Indian market is very much heated up. I mean, we have seen Rivas, Badlas and all AP, Genkos and LCs, all projects on the moment. I mean, we are sitting on, this is, I think this is the time when everyone is trying to buy out for all these projects. So it is all simple demand supply game going on. Take my words, at, um, after April, you will see a bit low in price. Q3 will be a heated up because it will be the time where India also need the modules and other market is also coming up. After Q3 and I mean Q4 like uh, from September uh, October onwards the price will go a bit low I can I can see that it will be going or moving in a, a better fashion just one question will it follow the last years or previous years learning rate pardon me will it follow the previous years learning rate like drop in price has been 25 to 40 percent if you talk about last five to six years I don't think it will be going like that because see, we all have seen what what happens if the drop in price will come. The best project today we have is um, your Riva, 750 megawatt um, AC we are talking, right? So this is one of the best project available in the market today. And when I, I remember the day when uh, the, I mean rates were out, the price were out, that at what tariff they have got it, it was the big headline on the top of the um, best of the newspapers as oh. Our rate full, uh, are so down and this should not be the rate the industry will get destroyed and then we have seen badlas then we have seen badla phase one two ap gen goes anything and everything which is coming up and now what happens i mean see the market picked up people have the projections of around 26 and 27 cents they have bitted with it but now today we see the price are around 34 cents 35 cents and frankly they are paying from their pockets today and no one can match that magic price because that is something which had been, uh, they have followed the trends of like four years, which is coming in though there will be a drastic price. Every year there will be a drop of two cents for sure. That was the calculation which was there in the mind. And yes, so. You rightly said there's a demand and supply, but again, uh, let's look, look into the world's demand. Right now you're talking about 400 gigawatt which is installed approximately. And then you're talking about 100 gigawatt every year. So you're talking about another 400 gigawatt coming in next, next four years. So you're talking about doubling the capacity in next four years with the today's stall capacity. So there's no way the price of the model will not go down. It will go down. No, it will go down, but it will not go down in the significant fashion how it happened earlier. It will be a, it will be a slow drop. It will be a steady drop. Now we all understand, all Indian market understood that how to work with price. You see the last bit which we, which had happened. We have seen a rise in price. So now people are trying to keep a better cap. They are not trying to go drastically low with the pricing and play with it. It's just my view on the module pricing bit. I think, uh, like Poovan's rightly saying, I'm, I'm sure there's a supply demand uh, cycle which is playing out. That's simple economics, right? It, it works even in uh, bread and butter and milk. But I think what's significantly different over here is also a lot of geopolitical play which is uh, influencing these prices it also gets impacted by the raw material prices at the end of the day aluminium silicon glass copper and the eva these are all raw materials at some point in time imagine that if you are making a car for example uh, not because i'm from mahindra but let's assume that we're making a car at the end of the day your steel will come at X price. Your plastic will come at X price. So I feel even if you sell 10 million cars a year, 
or 40,000 million cars a year, at the end of the day, there will be uh, a point where you will have to stop just because of the raw material prices. But of course, volume adds whatever it does and reduces prices. But I think it will at some point flatten out and, and I don't think it will continue to fall the way it did in the last five years. Um, just to summarize the question on whether technology will get adopted or not, I think it at the end of the day depends upon value. I think a lot of people in this uh, panel and the panel before this spoke about value. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's all about value. Uh, and I would like to give two anecdotes. One, the more simpler one to understand uh, is LED TVs, right? When LED TVs were launched, probably a 24 inch or a 40 inch TV would cost you maybe a lakh. Today, if you go in for an LED TV, a 40 inch would be maybe a 36,000, depending on the brand that you're buying. Similarly, if you look at modules, right? Modules used to come in 2013-14 with an option of with ARC or without ARC. And when you used to choose with ARC, you had to pay a couple of cents extra on top. Now, ARC is fate accompli. You cannot choose a module without ARC unless you pay an additional premium. And when I say ARC, it is anti-reflective coating which is on top of the glass to reduce the reflectance and absorb more light. So ARC at the end of the day is a cost to the module manufacturer, but because of the high adoption rate at the end of the day, it became a de facto, hence making with ARC cheaper than without ARC. So those are my thoughts that I would leave you with in terms of value and technology um, and, and whether ROI will ever work. And I think with that, we, we're done with time. Uh, but we are open for questions. And just to recap, we have Jinko, Mahindra Sasten, Kodrich, and Fortum on the dais. So whenever you're asking questions, it'll be great if you could introduce yourself. And it's OK if you forget our names, but you could call our company name out. We have yes, sir. Good question. Has anyone used flex panels and uh, uh, advantages or disadvantages, if any? See, uh, uh, we have not used the flex panel, but at least I have analyzed the flex panels. So, so you're talking about these flexible panels, correct, which comes in a roll, okay. So the, the positive sides are, these are flexible. I mean, you can put it on the roof, you can put it on a, on a, on a, on a, these kind of window panes, or, and, and you could also make it a good aest aesthetic design out of this flexible panel, okay. But the challenge, what are the challenges? Challenges are, these are low efficiency panels. You need a huge area to cover it up. Module sizes won't be more than 100, 120 watt. That's what you're talking about. Uh, when you're talking about a large scale installations, they, they may not fit properly. But when you're talking about small scale, it, it may work very well. If you're talking about, talking about application based systems, like, uh, like putting it in, on, in your laptop bag, that's perfectly all right. But for utility scale or a bigger size plant, it may not it may, it may not fit in. And then obviously the prices are quite high. Prices are like a double than the double than the Jinko's price. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Four not four times. I think it's somewhere around twice. So twice yeah, than the current market price. I would agree. It depend on the location. I mean, you need to analyze on, on from the from the particular location point of view. East west, yes, but again, no, I think I think there's a little confusion on the panel. Is your question for flexible type in general? In general, he's asking uh, like instead of um, putting the modules west uh, south facing, if you put it east west oriented. North south, north south. Already there in the south facing panels are always on the south. South, south facing. facing or east west orientation. So you you Never must be talking about south. east west, correct? Yes. 
So we we are using as a south 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 side. Okay, so ideally it's a north south axis only. You are talking about in the in the European side because latitudes are. I mean you are talking about little high high up 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 in the globe. So that's why east west give a better generation. In country like India, it's better to have a south facing uh, when when you can better generation. Then, then it has to be analyzed. You need to you need to use the panel uh, with the with the slope of the roof, and then you analyze what efficiency drop you're getting it. It has to be put it in a in a in a simulation. Thanks for using your hands. I now get your question. Um, if I may respond to it, how how we could probably do it is the modules which are facing the south. Uh, since you can't do much to the roof and you can't create a superstructure. What you would probably want to do is the modules which are facing the south connect that to a particular inverter and the modules which are facing to the north connect them to a particular inverter. The only reason why the modules face south is because the sun path is slightly tilted on the southern side but if you look at the northern side it would still re receive sunlight. Another interesting thing is if you compare CDT versus polycrystalline, CDT typically performs better with diffused light. So you could probably consider a north side with CDD and a south side with a polycrystalline or a monocrystalline and two separate inverters so that the voltages, I mean, I'm just trying to give you a quick answer to your question and thanks a lot for using your hands. I had not figured the question till then. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, Parag Bhamre from Absent Power. Hi, Parag. Um, so we talked a lot about uh, you know the installations and everything um, one of the questions that i had was uh, in the rooftop segment maybe the uh, total installed capacity right now is only about two gigawatts or so uh, slated to increase in the ground mount segment you have several gigawatts already installed and the utilities from time to time are asking the developers to provide data um, in slots of how much renewable energy is actually going to go into the grid. When it comes to the rooftop segment, as and how we progress, maybe not towards the 40 gigawatts, but increase the capacity, Can how can analytics play a role? Because right now, even the utilities have no idea of how much uh, renewable energy power is actually coming into the grid. And how can that play a role? Because I clearly see that this is going to be an area where a lot of people are going to, or a lot of utilities are going to be clueless. And um, I do see a big gap there um, in the future, maybe next three to four years. Great question. Anyone wants to take it? Or maybe I can, oh, thanks, okay. So I love the question, uh, Parag, because I think what you've touched upon is something that people are not thinking about. Um, but but in terms of what's happening globally, there are companies which are thinking about it and there are various solutions which are already available. Uh, what you're talking about is uh, a smart grid at a micro level. So these are micro grids which are smart. Um, and, and what you're seeing today is just the adoption of net metering, which is bi-directional meters which allow you to pump power in. And the same bi-directional meters when then pull in the data, send it to the distribution company and also study the historical trends of consumption pattern. Now that is data which is already available with the reliances and the BESTs and all these companies today in terms of what is the consumption at what time at least for the circle levels. And the same data will get to the next level in terms of micro household level and data analytics will play a huge role in the way this is either cur curtailed or pumped and when I say this it is the generation which gets curtailed etc and and there are also a lot of technologies which are coming up the simplest one is battery battery will allow the grid to be more stable allow you to either push it into the grid or push it into the battery within the house and there are already smart um, controllers which allow you to toggle between diesel, biogas, wind and solar. So what you've touched upon is important, but I would say more than just data, it's a combination of hardware, communication and data analytics. So that's that's the entire picture. And there are companies who already have solutions, but I think they came up with it too much earlier than what the market demanded it. I hope that answers your question. 
whenever one anand one. is on the stage it means it's time to end so how much <laughs> more time do we have we can take one last question from Thank okay you, anand. we can so although anand says we can take one last question i would love to hear maybe all the questions and we'll choose which one to answer <laughs> if that's okay yeah 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 so question number 1 so we'll take three questions but we'll choose which one to answer question 1 please okay so my name is sweta sultania i'm from anstan young my question it's a quick one uh, in terms of timeline uh, we were speaking about the pre feasibility studies uh, being conducted through drones my question is uh, how much time can approximately be saved by utilizing uh, such drones okay question 2 uh, my name is vishal i represent jairad sula Uh, yeah, sure. my question to uh, is to mr abhay uh, yeah. is that uh, all our plants are connected to internet correct yeah and almost uh, all yeah almost all correct uh, how vulnerable are our plants from an it perspective uh, i have been going through one uh, interesting article uh, that sma inverters are also uh, hacked they they can be hacked uh and they can be controlled remotely can be switched on and off whenever someone wants it and that can be a huge concern for entire industry uh it can destabilize the grid also if if a person with malicious intention can uh access suppose say 100 or 500 megawatt plant got your question yeah got your question any last question yeah. yes ma'am Hi my name is Neetu Goel I'm from True Sun Energy so um you very nicely put uh, all the technologies where all the intervention is in terms of structure in terms of inverter in terms of cleaning but i feel they are more relevant for larger projects so it will be good to understand from the uh, panel some of these technologies how relevant they are for rooftop sector for smaller project size say around 50 to 100 kilowatt in terms of cleaning so i think a uh, cleaning is one sector which will is very which area is very important so if some light can be thrown on that as well perfect so i think the panel will be generous in answer all these three questions <laughs> but it was it was just to get the questions quickly and whoever wants to answer whichever one free to answer uh probably i will take all the questions one by one uh, regarding the drone survey and the time it takes it is typically 3 to 4 days and you can get a report in a in a you can get the complete report in a week's time uh, probably if you go through the conventional method of uh, putting in the uh, instruments at site uh, getting your civil engineer site person going there uh, then digging out all the data uh, probably it will take 15 days 20 days which you can uh, cut short in a week's time so that is one thing uh, uh i will answer the lady's uh, question first uh, related to the technology that you can implement uh, in uh, rooftop uh, one is the structure material definitely uh, currently we were going for the hot dip galvanized uh, with it micron is the bare minimum thickness that we talked about uh, but right now we can we can look at the posmac that is the one material which i discussed earlier also uh, which is which is a good material mm. and uh, more than the material it's about the workmanship uh, because the laborers who are working there they are not skilled laborers and that is true for uh, for most of the projects that has been done in india so uh, second second thing is uh, typically in modules we talk only about the uh, portrait and the landscape but interestingly i had i had come out with one video uh, uh, a weeks back where where they are talking about putting the modules in x direction so that all your water it can drain out from one of the corners and you can you can prevent the uh, losses in the module because of the formation of the layer which comes at the end of the panel because of the not cleaning in a proper way so so that is that is maybe one of the one of the tips from mind there would be more things which will come from the panel uh regarding the maybe maybe if we can answer one question at a time so that the uh, couple you have any thoughts on the question on uh, the i think i think we'll we'll talk about the drone so yeah. if you have so, any thoughts so for a drone i think he has already mentioned so it's not only the saving the time on the on the on the pre feasibility this also helps you to reduce overall construction time 
because you're you are doing these things on the desktop you know what, where which areas are challenging you can pretty much communicate to the epc and contractor in your office itself these are the challenges please focus on on that first rather than going on the site and identifying those issues so this will help also in the in a, in a overall construction timeline like for a rooftop uh, these drones could be pretty much used in a rooftop if there's a if there's a, let's say if the government decide, as, as I already mentioned, this Karnataka government has recently decided, if some particular district decide to find it out what is the roof area, and then if do these kind of services, uh, survey, uh, you as a EPC or a developer, they have a full data available in a public domain which you can choose which roof roof for bid, bid for. You can easily estimate all the capacities which can be, which can be installed. So they are, I mean, these, whatever new technologies or the new practices are coming on the utility scale, same will be applicable for a rooftop also, like a cleaning solutions. I mean, if you talk about these dry cleaning solutions, these are the robots, let's say, there are three or four robots per megawatt what you use in a utility scale. Now, if you, your project size is 100 kilowatt, you may need only one robot to install over there. Only thing is you need to understand the cost point of view because rooftop is a, is a different market and utility scale is a different market. In utility scale, you talk about hundreds of robots, here you're talking about one robot. So we need to understand from that perspective. And just to answer this SMA question, I don't think that should be a challenge because you know the sites are so remote, getting the internet connectivity itself is a big, big task. So I don't think there should be a security concern from these inverters. Okay, so we've followed a different pattern. Each panelist gave you all three answers, so let me also do that. Uh, in terms of the drones, um, for the 250 megawatt Riva project that was surveyed, what would have probably taken 45 days to 60 days, with a drone, I think the team did it in 15 days, so probably 4x faster. In terms of drone thermography, you would typically do one and a half to two megawatts a day with a handheld camera. If you use a drone, you can do maybe 10 megawatts, so you are five times faster. So in terms of speed, I think 4x to 5x is a norm. Um, coming to the question on technology for smaller plants, I think in terms of pyranometers, they would cost somewhere around 2 lakhs. So for a rooftop, which is maybe 10 lakhs, it doesn't make sense in investing 20% on a pyranometer. So there are weather forecasting agencies which are giving you data of irradiance. You don't need any hardware at all, and you can calculate your PR using that. That's a very handy innovation. Another great innovation on the uh, rooftop side is clip-on kind of uh, structures, so which which do not have the weight of the normal steel, and you can just clip on the modules onto them. There is also innovation in terms of uh, how your plants are being monitored, because like Sachin was mentioning, Godrej itself has 100 plants. Now monitoring 100 plants is a big pain, so there is a lot of innovation which has come into being in terms of uh, how many plants can be monitored in one go. Coming to the question on data security, I think uh, India has not implemented a lot of measures of data security and it's really similar to the way government enforces seat belts and helmets. If uh, we are able to formalize a uh, data security policy and implement it, I think it's really possible. US has the NRC uh, guidelines which force you to have systems and checks and balances in place which can protect your site data. Uh, I wouldn't malign SMA or any such inverter manufacturer. At the end of the day, even RBI and Government of India is open for hacks despite all the security. Um, and what you're saying is right. Uh, internet is available. Hacking is a problem. And the only thing you can do is invest in a good firewall which is maybe 20, 30,000, but uh, getting a good firewall and having an EMC on the firewall so that it gets uh, updated regularly with all the ransomware will solve your problem. Over to you, Anand. Sorry we took longer. No, no, I think, uh, okay, we'll just take the last thing. You're right. So there are solutions which can be coated onto modules. The reason I didn't mention it is because if you already have ARC, etc., you don't need to coat them. But if you're in a bad industrial area where uh, there's a lot of chemical effluence or there's a lot of uh, copper uh, dust, etc., which is coming and depositing on your modules, you could go in for a few which are available. No, the warranty does not get void. I answered on behalf of the OEMs.
Yes, it does. No, no, no. You cannot forget your plant ever. You have to keep taking care of that. For this dust issue, I mean, if someone wants to see this plant running up with these kind of coatings and uh, fantastic work done in Garchandu or Chandrapur, there are, um, it's an area where you find a lot of coal and all. So there are ash flies and all these kind of things. So they have, you can go uh, to one of the plant I can suggest, it's uh, Manikar cement. It's the old plant where we have done and now they have done the coatings over that. And actually they have found the results good. Uh, I'll, I'll share the details with you guys on that, yeah. Okay, so I would, yeah, Abhay, you were mentioning, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I, you would like to say anything? No. I'm done. <laughs> okay. So great. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it was a great meeting. Uh, yesterday, the training was very good. Today, the conference was even better. I really like to thank all the speakers. Uh, it was really a privilege and honor for me. We had an esteemed, uh, a very high uh, speaker of high esteem uh, today. Uh, all the audience are of uh, very high quality and uh, very senior people. So this can be evaluated like the level of discussions and the involvement was there was really very interesting. Good motivation for us to keep on organizing such more events. So thank you very much. Uh, big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I would. Uh, like to propose a word of thanks to all the speakers, all the delegates, uh, uh, all the event partners, Longi, Goodwe, Vison, Clean Tech Solar, Vari, and uh, Indian Solar Association for helping us. And uh, I think the hotel, the event management team also was extremely supportive. So thank you. Uh, I would now request uh, Abhay ji to please uh, pr present mementos to the speakers on the stage.